kind of kind of did a number on this hotel room, eh? See you later, hotel room. Oh, what a mess. Why is that even there? It really sucks to leave this area. We just got back from British Columbia yesterday, and now we're leaving Seattle. We only spent maybe less than 24 hours in Seattle, rented a hotel, and uh, now we're hopping on a flight. Yo, we look like we still belong in British Columbia. Uh, My head looks a little weird. That's yeah? A good, that's a good word. A little wonky. Got a shirt. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, have a good one. Take care. See ya. Well, in case you were wondering why I ended up back at the hotel after saying I was about to leave, the reason is because I forgot my phone at the hotel. Rob drove all the way to the airport, dropped the rental car off, then I had to get a hold of a taxi here, take the taxi back to Crown Plaza in Seattle to pick up my phone, then take another taxi back here. So today's just not starting off too good, I'm not gonna lie. At the very least, my plane doesn't board until like 6 p.m., so I've got plenty of time. And how many bags were you dropping on? Yeah. Um, is there any way you could just check it for free? Yeah. It, or tape Do that? You tape it? Yes, please. I can, I can get some tape. Thank you so much. Checking in my bags now, then after that I'm gonna go to my uh, gate and just chill. I've got about like five hours to kill, which is probably the most I've ever had to kill in an airport. I've never been this early. It's overweight, so. Can I do can I pay extra for it? I mean mm -hmm, yeah. okay. it's hundred dollars. Yes. Holy smokes, okay. Let's just swipe away. Really need to get something to eat at this point. I want to sit down with you guys and talk about more of this trip. I feel like it was kind of out of context. I did like a travel vlog and then I didn't really follow it up with anything. It was just like straight into sturgeon fishing. So I kind of want to talk to you more about those things shaking a lot. Why Rob and Perrick and I did this and how we got to this point. So I'm going to grab a bite to eat, sit down and then film that. Also show you some footage that I probably will never release for like a full video. I'll probably just add it to this video to talk about it just for the sake of discussion. Hopefully this shot doesn't look too shaky because it looks really shaky on my camera. <clears throat> so I'm just not making my uh, sturgeon video public. The video is called The Biggest Fish of My Life. If you haven't seen that video yet, check the link in the description below. It's actually kind of like a short film slash vlog I created. I finished it last night in the hotel room. I stepped to like 2 a.m. editing it. And in my opinion, it turned out good. But I left out a lot of context. A few things, one of which, why Perrick, Rob, and I were in British Columbia fishing for these fish. The whole trip was actually based around British Columbia. We really didn't even plan on doing the whole Seattle thing until like a few weeks after planning the trip. I've been wanting to catch one of these giant white sturgeon for years now. I followed a page called Sturgeon Slayers for quite some time and they posted like these amazing giant aerial jumps of these, you know, seven, eight foot, nine foot plus fish. I mean, these are fish we're talking about here. So one day in Orlando, when it was Rob Perrick and I, I think Black Tip, we were all having, you know, dinner together. I pulled up one of the Instagram posts and I was like thinking to myself, I'm like, I'm here in Orlando. I just got done doing two trips. Why can't, you know, I plan something with the dudes over in British Columbia, the Sturgeon Slayer dudes. So I basically turned to Rob and showed him I think it was this video right here and was like, let's let's do it, let's go, you wanna go? And at that point we just realized we we're gonna do it. The next day we booked a trip with uh, Kevin Estrada with Sturgeon Slayers. We didn't realize he was one of the best dudes in the Fraser River area in British Columbia, but we basically booked a trip with him. So after we booked the trip, there was like a few months that passed and Rob and I, Rob Herrick and I planned that we were gonna go on this trip together, stay a few days in Seattle with Rob's family, then drive up to British Columbia. And uh, none of us ever, been on the Fraser River or targeting these fish. This was completely new to us. Little did we know that this was gonna be the most memorable fishing experience of our entire lives. That fish kicked my butt. That was incredible. These fish are not to be messed with. We went out with Kevin. We had no idea what to expect. We've never fished these fish before. And it basically turned into like this awesome video experience and just an amazing fishing story, which I kind of shared with all of you. Now there were two days, the first day, I caught a sturgeon. It wasn't very big, it was about four feet. Now, for some of you guys, that's pretty big, but in terms of Fraser River sturgeon, that's not saying much. I mean, Kevin goes out and catches that size of fish quite often. It's not uncommon. Oh, first sturgeon on. 
Yeah. What do you, what do you, you want me to film you or the fish? <coughs> Whatever you think is. I just swallowed a seed. <laughs> Whatever you think is necessary, Perk. You're the cameraman here. Wow. This one's tagged. There's a tag number. First white sturgeon Perk was filming there. It's a nice one. Under 150, you said? Beautiful fish. Wow. Okay, so if you guys want to do a So, there's my little discussion. I wanted to take some point in time and sit down and talk to you guys about this because I know it was confusing. And like I said, the reason why it was confusing is because that's kind of how it was supposed to be. Like, I don't think you guys realize how ridiculously unplanned these fishing trips are. And in my opinion, those are the best fishing trips. If you do too much planning, then it's easy to jump off course. But if you don't have any plans or any like set schedule, then there's no worrying, you know, doing something random or, or maybe changing plans. Like there's no obligation. Also, if you guys ever want to experience these fish for yourself and book a trip with Kevin or any of the other sturgeon slayers, I'll leave a link in the description below as to where you can check out his website along with his emails to where you can book a trip directly. I highly recommend it. Whew, that was a long rant. 325, my video's uploaded. I'm chill, I'm relaxed. I'm stoked. Slept for about an hour on the plane. Tried to do some editing. Turbulence was kind of kind of iffy, so I couldn't do that. But I'm here in San Diego. Feels good. So I'm here in San Diego. I'm with my two parents, my two lovely parents. This is a very chill stop for me. Not too much fishing. I may get out once or twice. I'm mainly just gonna relax. Just kick it until my next big fishing trip with Rob and a few other guys, of course. Guys, what a freaking day. Seattle in the morning, San Diego in the afternoon. I'm very fortunate to be able to do stuff like this. And I never really would have thought I'd been traveling to this extent a few months ago, or even a few years ago. First time in Seattle, loved it. First time in San Diego, hopefully I love it. This is the kind of beginning of my whole second part of the journey. Pacific Northwest was the first part, and then now we've got like half time, which is San Diego with the fam. Then after that's a little bit of Florida action. But uh, I think I'm gonna end this vlog here because it's almost 12. Before I sign off, I want to thank all of, all of my good buddies, all of my viewers for watching and supporting my most recent upload, that being the biggest fish of my life, which is at 110,000 views. Now, granted for some YouTubers, that's nothing. Some YouTubers get that in the first 10 minutes. But for me, that's massive. That means that you guys not only are enjoying my content, but are kind of sticking with my videos. I know I didn't post too many videos during this whole excursion, and I was pretty much the last dude to post, but judging from these views, I think you guys kind of enjoy the stuff. That just excites me. You know, I've, I've read all these comments, and reading your guys' comments makes me want to go on the next trip. It makes me want to film the next video. It makes me want to move on to another bigger and even better project. So that being said, Thank you, you loyal. I appreciate you. Thanks for watching the videos because I think I'd be pretty much a scrub if it weren't for you guys and if it weren't for this whole YouTube deal. I, th I think it's safe to say I'd be pretty scrubby. But the reason why I turned on the camera before I went to bed is to thank you all for just being some, some great A homies, watching the videos and giving me some good feedback, some good honest feedback. And I also want to express how stoked I am to continue these traveling excursions. I'm excited to check out San Diego, and I'm still heavily vibing from British Columbia in Seattle. Those two places are awesome. So as a, uh, as a quick thank you, I'm gonna throw up the drone here in San Diego. I'm sure it's pretty illegal because we're pretty close to the airport, but I'll throw it up anyway. Just as a small, tiny gratitude to all the support you all have been showing me for the past couple of weeks, months, years. As always, Thanks for watching, and remember, keep fishing, never stop.
All right, so uh, we're waiting for me to hook up here. Bumblebee yeah. master. I think I'm gonna call it giant bumblebee fat guy catches sturgeon. <laughs> fat yeah. guy. Fat guy? Yeah, fat guy. Giant bumblebee cut sturgeon. <laughs>